What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to translate Morse code using Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so the idea of today's video is quite simple. We want to take a simple message and we want to convert it into Morse code. And then the result, we want to play it via the speakers. Now, for those of you who don't know what Morse code is, it's essentially a coded language where each character can be encoded uh, as a combination of beep tones. So for example, the character A is a short beep tone followed by a long beep tone. The character B is a long uh, tone followed by three short tones and then combined with pauses we can identify individual characters and with longer pauses we also separate words so we can identify individual sentences. That's the basic idea and for that we're going to need a couple of things. We're going to need two sound files, one for a short tone and one for a long tone and I have prepared those here in my um, directory so I can open that up and show you what that looks like. So I have a short MP3 and a long MP3, and I'm going to play them for you right now. So this was short, this is long, okay? So that's the basic idea. You can record them yourself, you can download them from YouTube, you can uh, look for them online, doesn't really matter, just take two files, one with a short beep tone, one with a long beep tone, doesn't really matter uh, how you create those. You need two files, they can be MP3, they can be whatever file type you want. Um, and in addition to that, we're going to need an external Python library called play sound. This is going to play the sound for us. So for that, we're going to open up the command line and we're going to type pip install play sound like that. Mike is already satisfied. Uh, so we're going to start by typing uh, import play sound. One, one little thing that I want to mention here because I have this here in my notes. For some reason, I don't know if I'm just bad at troubleshooting, but for some reason, uh, I had some problems with the short beep tone um, with the newest version of play sound. So if you encounter a problem with your beep sounds, what you might want to do is you might want to, ta uh, to type pip install play sound and then equals equals 1.2.2. So instead of what we did before in the command line, you type this in the command line, because with that version, I didn't have the problem. That's just a side note. If you encounter some problems, uh, you might want to have not the most recent version. Now, the basis of everything we do here, actually, let me let me finish the imports first, we want to import, I want to actually say from play sound import play sound, and we also want to import uh, time, so that we can wait for the individual pauses. The core thing in our application is going to be a translation dictionary. However, there's not really much interesting to, to show you here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy that dictionary. It's not too big, but I don't want to type it out here. So this here is the dictionary. Let me just see if I'm blocking this. I'm not blocking this. Okay. So that is the dictionary. Here we have just the name translate dictionary, then an ordinary Python dictionary. And what we have is we have a character on the left mapped. So a key value pair, a character, and then a beep tone combination. A dot means a short signal, a line. So a dash means a long signal. So what you can do now is you can pause the video and type this code uh, into your into your um, IDE. You can also just go to Google and type Python Morse code translation dictionary, you're going to find a couple of examples. W however you do it, just go ahead and make sure you have that dictionary. I'm showing you that I'm copy pasting this here because there's no value in me just typing out the individual beep signals, we would spend like, I don't know, five minutes doing just that. And there's zero value in you for, uh, in, in here. Uh, for you guys. So the important thing is you want to have the uppercase characters A, B, C, D, and so on with the correct beep signals. Of course, don't make them up, you want to use the correct ones. And then you can also include numbers if you want to. And in the end here, I have this special uh, thing here. So if you have a space, if you have a uh, blank, what you want to do is you want to uh, encode it as a slash, this is also Morse code. Once we have this now, we're going to start by defining the message to be translated. And this will now be this is just a message or something like that, whatever you want. Um, and what we're now going to do is we're going to translate each individual character. Now, in this case, we only have uppercase characters. So we're going to treat every character here as an uppercase character, obviously. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to join um, together separated by um, by spaces, we're going to join together here, the translation 
for a character where the character is in message dot upper. So what does that comprehension mean? That means that we take the message, we turn it to uppercase. So this is converted to the same message, but only uppercase characters. For each character in that message, we translate this character. And then we join all these characters together separated by blank. So you can see actually what this looks like if I print this. There you go, this would already be the Morse code. So if you don't want to know about the sound, we're done with the tutorial. That is how you take a message and convert it to Morse code. Because now you can see that we have the um, individual uh, signals here. So we can actually look up if that's correct. So we have um, a, sing, uh, a, a single uh, long tone. This is the T. This is correct. T. H would be uh, four dots. You can see we have four dots. Now all these are separated by spaces, which is important because we want to have a pause in between. Whenever we want to have a pause between words. So here we have, for example, the word this and then a pause. So then we use a pause, a pause and a big pause. So the slash and we're going to we're going to encode that in code uh, in a second here. So we're going to play the sound based on what we have here. So we're going to start by now defining the function play Morse code. And we're going to have a message which is already encoded. So this is going to be something like that here. Um, and what we want to do here is we want to say for each character in the message, we're going to play a sound, right? So for each character, not in the original message, so not for T, but for each character, so dot space slash or uh, dash in the encoded message, we're going to take an action. So for each character in that encoded message, if the character is equal to a dot, so to a short signal, we're going to say play sound short, actually in quotations short dot mp3. And we're going to say time sleep 0 0.3. 0 0.3 is a very, very small time, we just want to have a little bit of time to hear the sound and to have a little bit of distance between the individual sounds. This is not really uh, a wait, right? So this is um, an actually uh, a pretty, pretty small delay. Elif, if we don't have a dot, we might have a dash. In this case, we're going to copy that. And the only difference is, come on, the only difference is that this is going to be the long mp3. Now, if it's not that and not the other one, it might be a slash. Or it might be a space. In this case, we're going to treat them equally. Why? Because when we have a slash, it's also surrounded by those. So naturally, between um, the individual characters, we're going to have whatever we choose here. So time sleep 0 0.5 is what we're going to choose. If we just have a single space, this is going to be half a second of delay. If we have a slash, we're going to have two surrounding spaces. So this is going to be 1.5 seconds, one and a half seconds of delay. So this is going to sound correct. Um, and if for some reason we have something else, we're just going to print invalid character detected like that even though I think this should not be possible because it should fail here already because of a key error. Um, now, once we have that, we're now going to say play Morse code message. And we also want to print the message so that we can see what happens. And I think that this should actually be already the implementation. Now, I hope this is not going to be too loud. Otherwise, I have to turn down my speaker and I hope you hear this in a video. There you go. I think you hear that, right? Now I'm not gonna play all this, but you noticed the delay, you noticed also the individual sounds. Um, and when someone he hears that now, usually it's faster if you watch some military movies or something where they use Morse code, usually it's faster. Uh, but you can decode that if you're on the other end. Which brings me to the final part of this video, we want to also maybe detranslate it. So reverse translate it. And we're not going to play the sound. So that would just be text to speech, something like that. But essentially, all we want to do here now is we want to create a reverse dict. So reverse underscore dict, so reverse dictionary is going to be VK, so value key for KV for key value in translate di uh, dictionary items. So we take all the key value pairs and we make them value key pairs. Of course, this only works if they are um, unique. Otherwise, we're going to have some problems. 
And now what I can do is I can take the message and I can say, um, I can say reverse, reverse message is going to be this time. We're not going to join on spaces. We're going to join on nothing. It's so like an empty string. And we're going to say reverse dictionary C for C in Morse message. Uh, actually, not Morse message, reverse message, no, message. Sorry, there you go. Message dot split. We want to split the message on the spaces. And then we want to print the reverse message. Now we're going to comment that out. So we don't have to hear the sound. But there you go. Of course, it's all going to be uppercase because we cannot really decipher that into lowercase. But you can see we translated this message into that Morse code, we can also play it as we saw and then we can translate it back into the original message. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.